today I will show you how to knit a real sized sleeveless vest from the 9th issue of Pass Up magazine. I don't know how to resize it, that's why I will follow the instructions from the magazine and we will see what will I get in the end. Let's start with the back side. First make sure the racking handle is in its lowest position. Now raise 144 needles on the front bed, 72 to the left and 72 to the right side of the center. Place the edge springs on the last working ones. Now raise 144 needles on the back bed. Make sure the needles are arranged according to the needle rule and place the edge springs on the last working ones. It should look like this. Set both locks to N and the stitch size to 3. Insert the orange strippers and take the main yarn. Now knit one row. Set both locks to CX and increase the stitch size to 4. Now knit two rows. Set both locks to N and increase the stitch size to 5. Then knit one row to finish the cast on. Set both locks to CX. Remove the orange strippers and insert the black ones. Rotate the racking handle anti-clockwise to its upper position and knit 14 rows. Clear the row counter and set the front lock to N. Then set the back lock to GX. Move the edge springs to the sides and transfer all stitches to the front bed of the machine. At this point you may increase the stitch size by one number more than for the main knitting. This way your hem will stay flat and won't roll up after knitting the vest. After knitting the first row you have to return the stitch size to the one for the main knitting then continue knitting according to the instructions. I'm using acrylic yarn so I can easily straighten the hem with a bit of steam afterward. Now put all needles on the back bed out of work. Return the racking handle to its lowest position and knit two rows. Don't reset the row counter. At the right side move the edge spring and transfer the rightmost stitch one needle to the right. Then pick up the pearl bump and attach it to the empty needle. Finally return the edge spring on the end needle. Now move the left edge spring and increase one stitch the same way. You can use the orange tool to find the pearl bump easily. Now knit 74 rows. The row counter must be at 76 rows. You can reset it or leave it like that. Move the right edge spring and increase one stitch to the right. Then put the pearl bump in the hook of the empty needle. Now increase one stitch on the left side of the knitting the same way. Knit 76 rows without changing the settings on the locks. Your row counter will be at 76 or 152 rows if you haven't reset it in the previous step. You can reset the row counter now or continue without resetting it.
You have to increase one stitch on the right side and one stitch on the left side of the knitting. Then put the purl bumps in the hooks of the empty needles. Don't forget to support me by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Also, it would be very helpful if you share with me how to resize this vest. I'm curious to learn about your favorite method. Now need 76 rows. The row counter will be at 76 or 228 rows if you haven't reset it in the previous step. Clear the row counter. Use the single prong tool and cast off 4 stitches from the right side of the knitting. After you cast off the stitches, put the empty needles out of work. Place the edge spring on the last working needle and knit one row. Move the left edge spring and cast off 4 stitches from the left side of the knitting. Place the edge spring on the last working needle and knit one row. Move the right edge spring and cast off 3 stitches from the right side of the knitting. Knit one row to the left and cast off three stitches on the left side. Knit one row to the right and cast off two stitches on the right side. Knit to the left and cast off two stitches on the left side. Knit to the right and cast off one stitch on the right side. You can simply transfer it one needle to the left. Knit to the left and transfer the leftmost stitch one needle to the right. Now knit three rows.
At this point we can continue decreasing one stitch on every fourth row. I will leave the whole process so you can see everything. Meanwhile, you can enjoy your bowl of popcorn or leave me a nice comment in the comment section below. I will be very happy if you send me a photo of this vest on my Facebook page or my email. After you make all of the decreases, the row counter should be at 30 rows and you must have 60 needles on each side of the center. Don't reset the row counter and need 78 rows or until the row counter is at 108 rows. Clear the row counter. At each end, cast off 4 stitches on every 2 rows. You have to repeat these steps a total of 10 times. I use the yarn from the lock to cast off the stitches, so you have to cast off stitches on the side of the lock. While I was knitting this vest, several needles popped up on the back bed, so instead of GX, you may set the back lock to BX. Just make sure all pushers on the back bed are out of working position.
After you make all of the decreases, you will have 20 needles on each side of the center. Clear the row counter. Start from the right side and cast off all 40 stitches in the same way. You may even use the trick of it device since the edge will not be visible in the end. When you cast off the last stitch, the knitting will fall off the machine. So this is the back piece of the vest. The edges are rolling up, but we will fix this later. Now let's knit the front piece of the vest. Part A and Part B of the front piece are the same as for the back piece, so use the timestamps in the description to watch them again. I will continue to knit from Part C. Now we have to divide the stitches in half to make the neckline. First clear the row counter and set the front lock to BX. Make sure the back lock is set to GX. Raise pushers and the row working needles and put the left half of them in resting position. Push the trip cam to the right so it will trigger the row counter. On the right side put 5 pushers in resting position and then cast off these 5 stitches using the single prong tool. You have to cast off the stitches the same way as before. To make the process easy to understand, I will put an overlay of the row counter in the upper left corner. Now knit two rows. Put four pushers in resting position and cast off four stitches on the side of the lock. Now knit two rows. Put three pushers in resting position and cast off three stitches on the side of the lock. Now knit two rows. The row counter must be at six rows. Put one pusher on the left and two pushers on the right side in resting position. Transfer the left stitch one needle to the right then cast off the two stitches on the right side. Every time when you have to cast off one stitch you can simply transfer it to the adjacent needle. Now knit two rows. You must have eight rows on the counter. Decrease one stitch on the right side of the knitting. Now 
No need for rolls. Decrease one stitch on the left side, then knit six rows. Again decrease one stitch on the left side. Now knit six rows. Continue decreasing one stitch every six rows until the row counter is at 108 rows. Don't reset the counter. Transfer one stitch on the left side to the adjacent working needle, then cast on four stitches on the right side of the knitting. Now knit two rows. Put four pushers in resting position and cast off four stitches on the side of the lock. Now knit two rows and cast off four more stitches on the right side of the knitting. Now knit two rows. Transfer one stitch on the left side to the adjacent working needle, then cast off four stitches on the right side of the knitting. Now knit two rows and cast off four stitches on the right side of the knitting. Knit two rows and cast off four stitches on the side of the lock. Now knit two rows. Transfer one stitch on the left side to the adjacent working needle, then cast off four stitches on the right side of the knitting.
Now knit two rows and cast off four stitches on the right side of the knitting. Knit two rows and cast off four stitches on the side of the lock. At this point you must have only 4 stitches left on the front bed. Now knit 2 rows and cast off the remaining stitches. Cut the yarn from the lock and pull it through the last stitch. Then the right side of the knitting will fall from the machine. The row counter must be at 128 rows but I may have missed 2 rows in the process. Reset the row counter and put two empty needles and pushers out of work. Pull the end of the yarn tail from the lock to the left side of the machine and cast off 5 stitches. Put the yarn tail between the beds of the machine. Now slide the lock to the left. It won't need because all pushers are in resting position. Use the orange ruler and put pushers in working position under all working needles. Clear the row counter and slide the trip cam for the row counter to the left. Now knit two rows. Put 4 pushers in resting position and cast off 4 stitches on the side of the lock. Basically you have to repeat the exact same steps but with reverse shaping to knit the other half of the neckline. Knit 2 rows then put 3 pushers in resting position and cast off 3 stitches from the side of the lock. Now knit 2 rows. Put 2 pushers on the left and 1 pusher on the right side in resting position. 
then transfer the rightmost stitch one needle to the left and cast off two stitches on the left side. Now knit two rows and transfer the leftmost stitch one needle to the right. Knit four rows and decrease one stitch from the right side. Knit 6 rows and decrease 1 stitch on the right side. Continue knitting following the chart until you finish this half of the neckline. You may use the timestamps to watch the other half again and simply do the decreases on the opposite side. This is the front piece of the vest. At first I will sew both sides of the vest together. Next we have to knit the armbands and the neckband. Let's knit the armbands first. You must knit two of them. First make sure the rocking handle is in its lowest position. Raise 116 needles on the front bed of the machine, 58 to the left and 58 to the right side of the center. Place the edge springs on the last working needles. Now raise 116 needles on the back bed. The needles must be arranged according to the needle rule. Place the edge springs on the last working needles. It should look like this. Now set both locks to N and the stitch size to 3. Insert the orange strippers and take the main yarn. Now knit one row. Set both locks to CX and increase the stitch size to 4. Now knit 2 rows. Set both locks to N and increase the stitch size to 5. Now knit 1 row to finish the cast on. Clear the row counter, set both locks to CX and insert the black strippers. Rotate the rocking handle to its upper position and knit 14 rows. Now clear the row counter and take a contrasting color waist yarn. Knit 20 rows with the waist yarn without changing the settings on the locks. Clear the row counter and move the lock to the color changer. Leave all eyelets there, retread the machine and slide the lock to drop the knitted armband. It should look like this. You will remove the waist yarn after you attach it to the vest. Now let's knit the neckband. First make sure the rocking handle is in its lowest position. Raise 166 needles on the front bed of the machine, 83 to the left and 83 to the right side of the center. Place the edge springs on the last working needles. Now raise 166 needles on the back bed. The needles must be arranged according to the needle roll. Place the edge springs on the last working needles. It should look like this. Now set both locks to N and the stitch size to 3. Insert the orange strippers and take the main yarn. Now knit one row. Set both locks to CX and increase the stitch size to 4.
No need to rose. Set bone clocks to any and increase the stitch size to 5. Now need to unroll to finish the cast on. Rotate the racking handle to its upper position. Clear the row counter, set both locks to CX and insert the black strippers. Now need 14 rows. Clear the row counter and take a contrasting color waste yarn. Knit 20 rows with the waste yarn without changing the settings on the locks. Clear the row counter and move the lock to the color changer. Leave all eyelets there, retread the machine and slide the lock to drop the neck band. It should look like this. You will remove the waste yarn after you attach it to the vest. These are all the pieces you have to sew together. First, you have to sew the front and the back of the vest, then sew the yarn bands and the neck band using back stitch. Finally, pull the contrasting color yarn tails to remove the waste yarn. This is the final result. Tell me, do you like it in the comments below? It's one size smaller than what I will wear, but if I learn how to resize patterns, I will need a bigger one. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and see you in my next video.